Gets her watch, blows her whistle. Lola Bonta gets the ball in play. Very curious to see what the opening stages of this game look like for Houston because of who's on the ball right now. Sophie Schmidt completely changed the game when she moved from the back line up to the midfield of that 3-2 win over Louisville last week. James Clarkson kind of downplayed it a little bit. He mentioned that the subs helped as well, but to the layperson's eye watching that game, you could tell that Sophie Schmidt opened the entire game up in the middle of the park. Yeah, and again, that opened up things also for Marissa Vigiano. We heard that in some of the, the calls ahead of this match. And it's just different looks. That's something that we're probably still going to see. Both sides saying that they're focused still on their game here in the Challenge Cup. You know it's a long NWSL season. So a lot of what we're going to see is putting different combinations together and getting ready for a long summer of NWSL soccer. Shortest offseason in league history, and that in turn will give us a nice long time in which we have plenty of NWSL soccer. And early on, a corner for the current. It's Haley Mace, who had a goal and an assist last week. Number two pick in 2019 by then Sky Blue. Driven ball low in, sent to the front post. What a start for the current. The fastest goal in NWSL Challenge Cup history. Taylor Leach found some space. New insert into the starting 11 tonight, and it's 1-0 just like that. And again, good problems to have for KC, and if you blinked, you missed it. Able to get past Campbell here. You see Campbell bounced and was getting set, and just as she was getting set, that ball goes oppo corner, and now we see Kansas City gets on the board first early in this game. I'm sorry, I don't believe the Kansas City current starting 11. They listed Taylor Leach as a center back. That is not the finish of a center back right there. Off the corner, volley first time, over Campbell's outstretched hand, and into the side netting. That's just her second goal in all competitions since joining NWSL ahead of 2020. And it shatters the record of the previous quickest goal in Challenge Cup history. That mark was set at the four minute mark. And now here we are with a goal, a minute and change into this one. Oh my, you love to see it for, for KC Current. Was able to speak with Lo Labanta could not be more thrilled to be a part of this specific team. She reiterated that over and over again. Can Houston answer back quickly? A chance here for Sanchez! Blocked. Leach flying across. Excuse me, that's Alex Luera flying in to block it. And here we go. Great opportunity there. Got broken up there. Looks like uh, Daly gets bumped off, but good on Houston to still find a way to uh, recover that ball. Couldn't couldn't quite get anything done, as you mentioned. That was deflected. But another set piece, a corner now for Houston. Well, buckle up. Houston's first game had four goals. Their second one had five total goals. And if the first four minutes are any indication, we might be in store for the same tonight. Daly floats it toward the back post over everybody. Sanchez looking to keep it alive and earns a throw out of the equation. Well, if you fail to have any caffeine throughout the day, just rewatch the first four minutes of this game and that'll be a jolt to the system. As you mentioned, lots of NWSL action. Starting off strong for this fourth match of five tonight. Space on the run for Bennett, going one on three. And Jane Campbell will clear. You mentioned a very busy night. Scoreless with 15 minutes to go between Orlando and Gotham. 2-0 lead for North Carolina at the half in Washington against the Spirit. 
And a scoreless start to the second half between Chicago and Louisville. Here's Sanchez. Seventy now. She has played every single minute of every Challenge Cup for Houston. The Iron Woman, Katie Norton, on the back line. Another season of NWSL action. Another Challenge Cup. Of course, Houston has had some success in the past in this particular tournament. They win the first one. That set the stage. Now, Kansas City doesn't have the success in terms of the results historically yet in the Challenge Cup, but they score. They have scored now in all seven Challenge Cup games they've been a part of. Indeed, indeed, and hoping to change the tide or turn the tide to your point, Joe. And off to a good start, I'd say. Very strong early showing. A draw in the opener against Louisville. That very much should have been a win. They dominated that game from the jump. And they had opportunities to win it late. In the 85th minute of that game, Gemma Bonner saved a shot off the line from Addie McCain, maybe four yards out. Had no business being stopped, but it was stopped in the end. Could have and probably should have been a 2-1 win for Kansas City, but you don't deal in could-haves and would-haves in terms of the standing, so they just get the one point. They back it up, though, with that win over Chicago. And now off to a terrific start here. Oh, by the way, Kansas City opened up with three games on the road in the Challenge Cup, so they get to go home for the rest of the group stage after this. And if they could do so with seven possible points of nine on the road, that is about as good as it gets for the current. This is a team that, again, Matt Potter and Lola Bonta reiterated wants to quote take the game to our opponent i'd say they did that so far and now they will also get to take the game back to kansas city desiree scott actually started her career in kansas city with fc kansas city and now of course a franchise an nwsl franchise returns to kansas city as does scott and this is a Kansas City team dealing with the dark cloud of the Lynn Williams injury. Very tough blow. She'll be out for the season. Now who steps up is the question. Elise Bennett gets the nod tonight next to Kristen Hamilton. We'll see how she performs. Here's Daly on the overlap for Hansen. Played centrally. Sanchez was waiting for it on the back side of the box. Now Schmidt keeps it alive. Schmidt still loose in the box. And they're finally able to work it clear. Labanta. Here's Chapman. Now Ashley. Sanchez with it on the wing. Daly making the run to the penalty spot. Sanchez back for Chapman. Ten minutes into this one, a goal already for Kansas City. Can they get it back? The dash right here! Off the crossbar! Gamera Stevens with the blast. 
and it looked like Cassie Miller might have touched it up onto the bar. What yeah. an effort. Miller definitely got a piece of that, but you called out Gamara Miller as we were preparing for this game, and for good reason. That ball pops out, and Miller just gets a piece of it. It does clank off the crossbar. Gamara Stevens, one of those don't forget about me players that we're seeing in and around NWSL this year. One of those players who elected to go back to college after being eligible to turn pro due to the NCAA rules with COVID, getting that extra year. The dash letter go eligible to turn pro due to the NCAA rules with COVID, getting that extra year. The dash letter go. They bring her back now. Very happy to have her. Did appear last year in the regular season towards the tail end, but didn't have a full offseason with the team. They expect big things out of her in the middle. Daly floats one back in. No trouble for Cassie Miller. A very capable goalkeeper in her own right. Behind A.D. French right now. And that was the case last year. She was behind Alyssa Nair. But Alyssa Nair got hurt. Cassie Miller was called upon. 20 starts, only 17 goals against. That's a goals against average of 0.82 and eight clean sheets for the Red Stars. Turned over, Schmidt forced it. KC deals with it. A lot of room to roam down the right side for Weber. And it's last off of Weber. I think we could have asked for a better start to this one. A dozen minutes in, a goal, a couple of great opportunities, a highlight reel save from Cassie Miller. He's had it all so far. I think these two teams want to play an exciting style and play within their game, especially here in the Challenge Cup. Again, both sides really focused on what they can bring to the game, how they can manipulate the pace, the speed, the, even the style and, you know, have those cards in their favor. James Clarkson acknowledged that this team still has a lot of work to do, Houston, at the positive side of the Challenge Cup. It allows these teams to work out some of the things that need work before they get into that regular season. And you could see that in the up and down of their play. They come out with a really good 20 minutes against Chicago to start things off. Go up 1-0 in those first 20 minutes, lose 3-1. They come out flat against Louisville, down 2-0 at the half, and score three goals in nine minutes in the second half. Now here they start off slow, give up the goal in the second minute, and they've already started to turn the tide in this one. More play in the attacking half. Should have maybe had a goal moments ago on that Gamera Stevens shot. It's that uneven consistency that they're working on. They're hoping to, of course, find a narrower range there. Not too high, not too low. And that's the key right there, Joe, is, um, you know, making sure that whatever comes to them, that they're prepared, not too high, not too low, playing within your game, within your style, but also to your standards. And Marissa Vigiano, midfielder for the Houston Dash, knew that, you know, that game, although they were able to come back in the second half, their last match, they knew that first half wasn't to their standards and really had to have a conversation. And, make tweaks and, and every individual step up and, and bring what they can to this club. The words that James Clarkson used, looking for a complete game this time around. Very happy with that second half showing. Here's Sanchez to the end line. And out for a goal kick, well defended by Loera. Another one of those rookies in the equation for Kansas City, the 36th pick in the most recent draft after a stellar career at Santa Clara. First player in West Coast Conference history to be named the league's defender of the year for three consecutive seasons in 19, 20, and 21. For a moment, I thought you meant the year 1920. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> A really rich soccer history at Santa Clara. <laughs> we need whatever Luera's skincare routine is in that case. Here we are exactly. 100 years later. And we see there's a stoppage here. It's 
It's Mallory Weber on the ground for Kansas City. The rest of the squad will use this as a chance to go over and speak with Matt Potter. On that throw in from Houston, you see that Sanchez makes that touch. Couldn't tell definitively from that angle if there was any contact. Looking at the left leg, she lunged in there to try and defend. Yeah, my gut is, eye test tells me there wasn't any contact with Sanchez. I think you're right, it was the lunge itself. Maybe a little bit of an awkward little tweak. Get a better look of it here. Yeah, no contact, just the lunge in. Hope everything's all right with Mallory Weber. You mentioned that, obviously, KC with the news that Lynn Williams out for the season. Sam Mewis out at the moment. Fortunately, we've seen the injury bug hit pretty hard already in the Challenge Cup. For Matt Potter's squad, though, a chance to showcase that depth and look around at some of the young talent in the lineup. All these rookies, as you mentioned, Erica. Hate to see anybody go down, especially one of the stars of the league in Lynn Williams. But it creates that opportunity for a rookie like Elise Bennett getting the nod tonight. 26 collegiate goals, 12 assists along the way. In her time at Washington State. We'll keep an eye on Weber. Jogging now down off of the side of the trainer. Body language looks like she might want to give it a go. Yeah, good sign for sure, but also a good sign that you see Casey doing their due diligence. Don't want to create problems in the long term. Action resumes. Goal scored two minutes in. Taylor Leach. I should mention that the ball came directly from the corner taken by Haley Mace. Turn over here. Daly for Prince. Michelle Prince trying to work her way through to the end line. Does, but the ball was just out. Goal kick on the way for Kansas City. Saturday, 4 Eastern, CBS. San Diego and Angel City. The two newcomers going at it for the second time. Do not miss a minute of the action here in the 2022 NWSL Challenge Cup. Make note of that assist for Haley Mace. Remember last week, the goal and the assist. Now backing that up with another assist. Haley Mace making things happen for this Kansas City side. Over the top again here, a chance. Campbell through Bennett. The shot trickles wide. Did Campbell get away with a handball just outside of the box here? Let's take a look. Elise Bennett kind of slapping her hand, wanting to make a little bit more of that. But let's see, as you said, this replay. Ooh. Ooh. Definitely out of the box. We can see the ball was deflected. So if you put those two things together. Jane Campbell may be very fortunate to still be in this game. That would have probably been a denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity red card there. Last defender gets the hand on it. Catch a break. Even still, you saw that that ball just barely missed getting on the right side of that post there. And that's what they're looking from, rather what they're looking for from Elise Bennett having to step up for Lynn Williams. Seventh overall pick to FC Current from Washington State. Through to Chapman. Chance here for the dash, played in the middle, blocked. Sliding challenge from Elizabeth Ball, kept that one away from Cassie Miller. The more promising attack from Houston, and now the other way again with Mace. End to end action here at PNC Stadium. Mace across, finds Hamilton, lining it up. Kristen Hamilton shot saved by Jane Campbell. Said some uh, coast to coast action here in the middle. <laughs> As we see this chance, 
Houston, once again, making a run. They cut that back, but KC does such a great job of closing in, denying that space in the middle. And then Kansas City trying to make good going the other way. Jane Campbell able to make that stop. Sixth year in NWSL for Jane Campbell. Making her 98th start in all competitions tonight. James Clarkson to media this week talked about Jane Campbell, the impact that she's had on this club, even early on with some of the, the struggles as we've documented here. It's not credit those goals to anything that Campbell was or was not doing and nothing but praise for his keeper. Sanchez looking for Chapman making that run out of the back as she so often does. Now battle for it at the end line and it is out for a goal kick. The next Houston home game is Sunday, April 24th against Louisville. Go to houston-.com slash tickets to get yours today. Not a positive sign for Mallory Weber. Not able to continue. It'll be Nolf on the way in. Maddie Nolf, defender, comes from Penn State. And as you mentioned, we, we were keeping an eye on what looked to be a no contact tweak, lower body. For Weber but we've mentioned injuries throughout the league we've mentioned injuries to Kansas City but the one thing that everyone on this roster knows it's next player up that ain't all the third round pick from 2019 by Utah back then and migrated with the franchise over to Kansas City only 11 appearances six of them starts coming into 2022. Not the way you want to get back into a game, but a chance now for Nolf to stake a claim to a more permanent roster spot as the flag goes up on Prince. One thing Houston has done through a couple of games is create plenty of opportunities, and we've seen more positive notes from this attack in the first 23 minutes. Through the first two games, 26 shots, 11 of those on target, and four goals to show for it. Only problem has been on the back line, allowing five through two games, and they give up another just two minutes in to this one tonight. Giving away to Sanchez. Daly on her horse out in front. Sanchez keeps it. Flag might have been going up on Daly there. A heartbeat too late from Sanchez. And now Vigiano unable to find the feet of Sanchez. Through 24 minutes tonight. Four shots, three on target for Kansas City. And the goal scored by Leach in the second minute. We've got three shots, one on target for the dash, and the one that hit the crossbar. Into Sanchez. Four orange jerseys in the middle of the box. Sent that way. Haley missed time to jump. Kept alive on the end line in front of Prince. Lofted, it falls on top of the netting. Didn't catch it cleanly, but it was still a little too close for comfort in the end for Cassie Miller. Houston really being pushed, being pushed out here. As you see, great defensive play there by Kansas City, but also really great just, con just attack and consistency for Houston to try and even as that play, or the first option, I should say, is, is being broken down by the KC defense. Houston still finding a way to, to get a touch there, just have to clean up that final touch get something on 
on frame here again. Back for Katie Naughton. Again, still the only NWSL player to play every single minute of every single Challenge Cup with their start again here today. Second round pick back in 2016. I Chicago. Here's Luera. Elizabeth Ball in on the left side tonight. 16 starts last regular season with Kansas City after not playing in the Challenge Cup. Chapman for the dash. Well read by Nolf. Here's Hamilton. Nolf continues her run, hoping for the overlap pass back. Centrally, it's played instead. Now Labonta. Addie McCain lost it. Schmidt looking up, hitting it over the top, finds Daly, but the flag pops up on the far side. They're getting closer. Trying to claim that she started the run in her own half when the ball was played. Doesn't appear she won that argument. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen an official change their mind after a player tries to argue it. Although with the advent of VAR, in some cases, say. yes. Whether they want to or not. <laughs> yeah. That's a conversation for off the mic, I suppose. <laughs> Give it away. Here's Nolf. KC hasn't seen much time in the attacking half over the last 10, 15 minutes. But here they are now. A chance to make it 2 0. They do. What a start for the current. For the second game in a row, it's Kristen Hamilton getting on the score sheet. Amazing play here by KC. As we mentioned, Nolf trying to impact this game. And gets that ball in. Just a little flick here. And that opens it up for Hamilton to put it away. Hamilton traded last summer from North Carolina. 13 starts last year after the trade was made. Only scored once in those 13 games. She now has one in back-to-back -back games. And that brings her career NWSL tally in all competitions to 21. I guess you could say that Houston maybe has Kansas City right where they want them. Down 2-0 at halftime last game. Scored the three in nine minutes in the second half. But... In reality, this is not where you want to be, and James Clarkson cannot be happy on the sideline. Yeah, definitely going to have to have some conversations at the half here. We've seen the resiliency, though, of both of these sides. So we don't want to take for granted that this is how the game and the match will end. But to your point, if you can get a good start, which Kansas City has done, and again, they want to take the game to their opponent. So far, so good. We asked James Clarkson what he was hoping to see here tonight, and he joked. He said, well, as long as it's not like the first half against Louisville, I'm in good shape. Unfortunately for Houston, going the same way it did in the first half against Louisville. They still have a little bit over an hour to get this back. And we know they can. The question is, what change will Clarkson make to try and spark that different result? The lineup he went to in the second half that sparked the win last game is the lineup he started with here today. Here's Sanchez trying to get it right back, looking for Prince. Lamara Stevens keeps alive. Misplay, high ball. Prince finding her way back in the mix. And just taken by Miller. Prince, very active for Houston. Exactly what you would expect there 
Houston obviously wanting to play through that side there. But Casey again doing a pretty good job to disrupt what Houston wants to do. Half an hour gone here at PNC Stadium with Erica Ayala. I'm Joe Malfa. Glad to have you along with us tonight on Paramount Plus here in the Derby Q, as dubbed by the Houston Dash social team. Derby Q. We haven't had a chance to get into it yet, but are you partial to Texas barbecue or Kansas City barbecue? Well, I cannot. Now don't make any enemies on the broadcast. I can't claim to have ever had Texas barbecue, so it's, um, it's not a question that I can answer at this point. And you know what? The same goes for me in reverse. I've had Texas, have never been to Kansas City. Oh. So we kind of form a <laughs> hole in that one, but we both Indeed. cannot have a valid opinion without trying the other. Although I will say, uh, Texas barbecue would be tough to beat based on the bar that they set in my mind. So uh, Kansas City barbecue, folks, if you want to send any this way, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yellow card here. First of the match, brandished by Laura Rodriguez. Here's a look. There are Stevens. Clip there from behind. Another great play by Prince there. Dispossesses ball, I believe that was. Elsewhere on this busy night in NWSL, Gotham took a 1-0 victory over Orlando on an 86-minute winner by Midge Purse. The mighty Midge. of a game going on between North Carolina and Washington. It was 2-0 North Carolina at the break for Washington in the second half. A goal by Trinity Rodman, a goal by Ashley Hatch. It's 2-2 in the 72nd minute there. As we see, Sanchez commits a foul. Already uh, <laughs> very frustrated here, <laughs> but again, not able to convince <laughs> that the call should go the other way. <laughs> To round things out around the league, Chicago, Louisville scoreless with 15 minutes to go. Barring a change in the scoreline here over the last 12 and a half minutes, could be the second game of the night that goes to the break with a 2-0 scoreline. Now North Carolina blew its 2-0 lead. Can Houston have a Washington-type comeback in this one? I can say I've had Carolina barbecue. I have had Carolina barbecue, and they might want a word in this derby cue bit here. And all I'm saying is we might have to have ourselves a barbecue cup going forward, unofficially or officially. I'm here keep, for keep track of the North Carolina, Houston, and Kansas City performances against each other throughout the whole year. <laughs> yeah. I will say, though, I will give extra points to whomever serves me up barbecue with cornbread and or hush puppies. <laughs> so there you go. It's about the sides. And it's mac and cheese all the way for me. Mm. We've had a feast of action here in this first half. And all of a sudden a side of drama as this game picks up in its physical intensity side of drama. <laughs> I like it. Our producer a little bit upset with me now, making him hungry. <laughs> Here's Chapman. Run coming in the middle from Vigiano. Along to Sanchez. Look how quickly Nolf closes. Relentless pressure defensively from Kansas City. So far, very impressed with what Nolf has been able to do. As we mentioned, a substitution earlier than we would normally see under circumstances that we can only assume are due to discomfort, if not a, a longer term injury. We'll, we'll see how that works out for KC. Here's Prince. 
That's what's been lacking through 35 minutes for Houston once they get into the final third. I'm still coming off of hockey mode. So you've seen, though, once <laughs> they do get into that attacking, that final attacking third, kind of drop passes, right? But again, Kansas City able to close out. And you have to be careful. I'm all about a hockey drop pass. I know not everyone is, but it's a little bit different on the pitch. You essentially are giving the defense the opportunity to close in. And here Houston closes, nearly wins it. Desiree Scott just so stout on the ball. The reason she has been a fixture for Canada, 167 caps since 2010, has three Olympic medals to go with that. Nice little touch there. There's three Olympic medals to go with that. Nice little touch there. Tamara Stevens slots it through for Prince. Michelle Prince to Daly flicks on toward the back post. That would have been special. Houston showing what they can do with a little flick of not the wrist, but of the ankle. <laughs> a few opportunities here as again, Prince now on the opposite side of the pitch. Cuts that across and Daly maybe didn't get all of that ball, but the right idea for sure. And keeping Miller and FC, or excuse me, I almost said FC Casey. <laughs> Casey Current on their toes. Top of the time machine there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I was I was there for the uh, chain, chain, chain retirement, jersey retirement, throwback. Oh man, Lauren Holiday. <laughs> I can't even. How much time do we have? <laughs> well, we got eight minutes before the <laughs> halftime whistle will sound. I mean, what her and her family are doing, I mean, her husband drew a professional athlete as well, but for a few years now, they've gathered some resources to give to small up and coming entrepreneurs and businesses, particularly in the BIPOC community in Milwaukee, where Drew is now, and a few other places, just the holidays. As in the people, not the <laughs> dates. <laughs> I mean, those two. <laughs> Five on four emerging here for Kansas City. Now Hamilton, who has the second goal of the night for Kansas City, played along to Elise Bennett. He didn't quite get the ball right. A Kansas City team with a cushion. Two goals, one in the second minute from Taylor Leach, one in the 28th minute from Kristen Hamilton. Elise Bennett got credit for the assist on that Hamilton goal. First in her career as a rookie. And the first of what Kansas City hopes to be many times on the score sheet for Elise Bennett. Again, thrust maybe into action a bit sooner than they hoped with Lynn Williams on the shelf for the season now. A right knee injury. Speaking with Matt Potter, though, said Lynn Williams in as good a spirits as you can. Unfortunately, sport comes with injury. And felt that the response also by the team was a testament to that leadership that Lynn brought to the situation. Again, next player up, but, you know. That next player is Elise Bennett. Here she is. Bennett pokes it. Campbell saves it. Was doing her darndest to fight off the defender there. And I think just lost a little bit of power there at the end. Maybe also a little bit of force pulling her the other way. A little bit. <laughs> just a wee bit. But Elise Bennett, first start. We talked about that. So far, some great chances here. All freshman team in the Pac-12 in her first season with Washington. Picked up a number of other accolades along the way. First team all Pac-12 to close out her college career. 26 goals, 12 assists. And as you mentioned earlier, seventh pick in this year's draft. 
we're seeing around the league now teams more and more built by the draft you look at the starting 11 on any given night for Washington there's about six to eight top 10 picks in that starting 11 up to Prince working on Mace and Houston will earn a corner out of this and as we get this corner I think what you have to realize is that these are players coming out of college that have known this league 10 seasons we celebrate this summer and so there is that forward thinking there's that stability and that makes a difference competition just keeps getting better and better Sanchez from the corner right into the midst of Miller and a lot to be said about just the existence of this league for 10 years any players coming in the league this year at 22, 23 years of age, they had something to look up to when they were 10, 11, 12, and that's led them here. And again, just a testament to the growth and longevity of this league. Now, you have girls who grew up watching it, inspired by it, now starring as rookies or second years in the league. And also, these athletes coming as true, you know, true rookies and out of college have also more or less known women's professional soccer to exist. You know, we're getting into WNBA territory there as far as the consistency. WNBA obviously still has a good 15 <laughs> seasons on the NWSL, but again, thinking of all of women's professional soccer here in the United States, that's been an option. When you look at other sports, I mentioned hockey, that's still building and establishing. But it's, it's absolutely fantastic to see how it ups the ante. Competition. We saw 88 players declare for the WNBA draft for a, a league that only has 144 roster slots. Women's sports is on the rise, folks. You better get hip! <laughs> also love the, the Pac-12 shout out. Every time I hear Pac-12 thinking of basketball, they're always fighting like to get the respect <laughs> in women's basketball, but in soccer, oh baby, it's totally the opposite. <laughs> and you get now a coach in NWSL coming from the Pac-12 ranks over in Orlando, coming from UCLA. And a Cromwell. Vigiano has Prince darting through, sends it her way. Ball able to clear. This game's settling in a bit the last few minutes of the half. I mean, legs growing a bit more tired. Not the end-to-end -end action we saw through the first 30, 35 minutes. Do either teams have that final push to change this scoreline in the closing moments? A corner here for the dash might factor in. And I hear what you're saying about the play, but in, in some ways that it changes the complexity of the game because now you're looking to expose mistakes or, you know, win those battles. That makes for a completely different game, exciting nonetheless. Floated again on the corner. It's into the hands of Miller. They quite haven't gotten those services right. Houston, from either side, whether it's Daly with the in-swinger on the near side or Sanchez with that in-swinger on the far side. Too easy so far for Cassie Miller. And you compare that to Kansas City. They get their first goal in the second minute off the corner. Terrific delivery. By Haley Mace, even better finish by Taylor Leach. Closing in on this first half of the Derby Q. Have to give a shout out to uh, North Carolina once again. Not the not the the team, the state. <laughs> As I uh, got word that some of my Elon peeps are watching the game. Go Phoenix. Again, not the team. Well, yeah, the college team. Not Phoenix, Arizona. 
And shout out to Marilyn too. Just, just put that in there for you, Joe. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Stoppage time presented by Verizon. Three minutes of added time. Figured due in large part to the injury to Mallory Weber that saw Matty Nolf enter the match as an early sub. Three more minutes in this first half. Over the top to Sanchez, and the flag comes up. Rachel Daly very unhappy with this one. Had a good view of the play as it developed as she dropped a little bit deeper. Just a little bit over eager. It's come up a couple of times tonight for Houston. Three times they've been off. A very early time-wasting yellow card to Cassie Miller. And kudos to Laura Rodriguez. I've always personally been of the belief that give those out earlier and you nip it in the bud and it won't happen in the second half when it's down to crunch time. Mm -hmm. Yellow card Indeed, indeed. Similarly to what we've been talking about with, with each of these clubs, the same thing goes with officials, right, and referees. But, uh, take take the reins and really establish what the expectation is. Or more acutely, what will not be tolerated. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit out of the reach of Elise Bennett. A minute to go here in this first half. Two minutes to go between Chicago and Louisville, still scoreless. Four minutes to go between Washington and North Carolina, still tied at two. Gotham already has a 1-0 win on the evening over Orlando. And yet to kick off, 10 p.m. Eastern time, Portland hosts Angel City. Games on games on games. <laughs> in the past in the league, before this year where you had 12 teams, a five-game day would have meant the whole league in action. Here's Prince working on Mace. Those two have battled for 45, and another battle won by Mace as the cross ends up on the outside of the netting. Even though we're seeing Prince again try to cut through those seams, get that ball in play, you see that Kansas City, again, defensively in position to make sure that those are not dangerous. Might be the last chance of the half. Here's Daly, stumbles over the ball. Nolf takes it, and that is the last play of the half. Whistle blown by Laura Rodriguez. And at the break, two for Kansas City. Nothing for Houston. It was Leach and Hamilton doing the damage. Exactly where Kansas City wants to be. Take the game to their opponent. And that has resulted in, as you mentioned, two goals in the first half. Now Houston, we've seen them be able to pull things together here and there, don't have that finish that they need just yet. But again, this Houston team, both of these teams, we've seen them be able to really crank it up in the second half. And in that first half, Kansas City cranked it up themselves. Two goals inside of a half an hour. You say that it's right where... See these changes happen here as we get the second half underway. When you're down 2-0, you might want to get some things going. Looking for a quick start there and cleared away. Flag goes up on Michelle Prince. Campbell. Half time 
Ryan Garris into the match for Gamera Stevens in the midfield. And also we have the return of Ali Presock for Houston. Off the crossbar, that one troubled Campbell. Didn't get a read on it on the ball through from Bennett. Presox just recalled from her loan spell. Now back into the mix. Take another look here, Kansas City. Ooh, at that top corner. Giveaway, Bennett. Presock, one of the substitutions at the half. We heard from head coach James Clarkson, believes that the return of Presock will be a big boost for this Houston team. And we'll get to see how Presock and the Dash do in the second half. Down two goals. Also loved hearing from the new commish at the half. I love that you, you heard Sandra ask about the Black Women's Player Collective. I know Jessica Berman from her days with the National Hockey League. As a matter of fact, met her at a meetup hosted by the Black Girl Hockey Club. So it wasn't hard for me to imagine and believe that Jessica is already in conversation with the Black Women's Player Collective as part of her early tasks as commissioner of the NWSL. Taking the reins of a league on the rise. Already the top league in the world and only growing by the year. And that doesn't come without growing pains. Here's Prince, flips it through. Chance for the dash early on, and cleared. Here's Schmidt keeping it alive. And now Nolf able to clear. Too many touches, methinks. That's been the problem for Houston so far. You know, had a good chance again. Prince creating. Goes down, taken down from behind. This is gonna be a yellow card against Mace. And she seems like she's welcoming it. Kind of nodding her head. Knew what she did. Over to check on Prince now. And Prince, again, hits the Jets, but also a little bit of an awkward fall here. A twist there, a turn there, but Prince back up on her feet. It's a good sign. And they make the set piece count. It's been a struggle so far from the corners for the dash. Mm. What can they do from a better angled free kick? Yeah, just kind of been floating those in. Not really challenging Miller too much, to your point, on the corners. But Daly with Sanchez. Outswinger of Daly or an inswinger from Sanchez. Daly leaves it for Sanchez. You can see what the idea was, get it to Sanchez for a shot. Didn't quite come off the way they drew it up. And Michelle Prince put pressure there so that Houston could regain possession here. I'm gonna throw in, although we had a whistle, so see what's going on here. But Good on, oh, as we see a player down. I believe that's Labonta. Hello, Labonta. 
Eighth year in the league, over 100 appearances. 17 starts last year for Kansas City. A mainstay in the lineup. Now donning the number 10 jersey going into this season. Some pep in her step as she walks off. Hopefully take that as a good sign for a team that has already lost one player due to injury tonight. Mallory Weber had to sub off for Maddie Nolf. So again, good on Houston to recover. Nichelle Prince kind of forcing that. We'll get the throw in here. Another opportunity now to set something up. Here's Prince. Sanchez pulls it back. Mace takes it. A few too many touches again, trying to settle that ball down. Prince tracking that down. Been very impressed with what Prince has been able to give Houston in this match so far. That being said, need a little bit of support for Prince putting in all of that work and effort, winning the ball back, forcing turnovers, but then no finish. James Clarkson was quick to shout out the success of both of his wingers, Maria Sanchez and Nichelle Prince, through the first two games. Those two have really driven the attack from the flanks, and that's how this team wants to attack, from out wide, from outside in, get it out there, then get it into Daly and make magic happen from there. Sanchez, in her return to NWSL after a stint in Liga MX, has impressed early on. Drafted in the second round of 2019 by Chicago. Brief stint with them in the league. And two years in Liga MX, most recently with Tigres, where she took them to back-to-back -back title matches in the Clausura and Apertura of 2021. Lifted one trophy, lost the other. And now back in NWSL. And on the other side, Michelle Prince has been terrific domestically and internationally. Two-time medalist with Canada and called in to the upcoming international window. One of three starters tonight for the Dash called in for Canada. Chapman, Schmidt, the other two. And now they'll all have to defend a corner. And on the note of where this league is in the overall picture. The U.S. Women's National Team, of the 23 players they called in, only two of them not NWSL players. So a roster full of NWSL talent for the Americans. Mace with already one assist from the corner tonight. She won't get one there. I think they can forgive one effort from the corner like that given what she did earlier on. Houston has seen a lot of the ball, 61% of the possession. Just haven't done a ton with it. Six shots, only two on target, testing Cassie Miller. And of those two shots on target, only one a real threat. The one that she made the diving stop in which she parried it onto the crossbar on the Gamera Stevens shot. Might have to work here a bit. Initial ball headed away and now cleared further away. Elise Bennett camped out under it. McCain back for Luera. Rather Leach. Now inside for Bennett. On the turn, goes down, draws the foul. Yellow card out of the pocket as well. Ali Presock, welcome back to the dash. Here you are in the book. See, once again, Kansas with that attack. And just a, a really great heads-up play there by Elise Bennett knowing where that defender is and kind of playing into that. Not a dive, 
but a, I, I wouldn't say it was a dive, but a heads up play, knowing where that pressure is coming. Make it easy enough to establish that contact was made. <laughs> This is an awkward position for a free kick. A little far for a shot. A little close for a cross and a little too central for a cross. What does Labonta have cooked up? Runs over it and May strikes it. It's about as good as you can do from there. Just if you're going to pick a spot to have a free kick, that is the last place you would pick to have it from. You either want that about seven yards closer or seven yards left or right to give you an angle for a cross. He can. That one just sails over the frame of the goal. Daly, great ball into the path of Prince. Flag stays down. Here's Prince on Mace again. And again, it's Mace winning that battle. Those two have gone at it the entire night. Prince has won her fair share. Mace has done her thing. Uh -huh. oh. Sorry, couldn't help it. <laughs> <laughs> Mason Beffert. Some of y'all won't get that. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take 90 minutes of those two going at it one on one. Nice. Here's Bennett continuing to shine in her first start. Labonta over the top. Balls for Hamilton, plays it in the middle. Almost three. McCain had a chance for her second goal of the Challenge Cup. A quick striking counterattack from Kansas City. Kansas City finding ways to get through that Houston line. And again, as we heard James Clarkson talk about Jane Campbell liking what Campbell's doing, but being put in situations, dangerous situations. Houston's got to clean up there. Here's Prince. Flag again stays down. Played centrally. Nobody waiting at the penalty mark for it. The run came inside from Vigiano. Daly not quite there yet. McCain. Slow to get up was Bennett. Washington, North Carolina finished 2-2. Two to two. Chicago, Louisville finished scoreless. So what that means is if Kansas City can go on and hold on to win this one, Chicago and Louisville only picking up a point each, they would widen the gap in this central group. Louisville picked up only its second point. Chicago picked up its fourth. Should Kansas City win, and they'd be on seven. So through three match days, they would have a three-point lead and be undefeated on top of the central group. And that's again with three matches coming on the road. Do not lose sight of that in this equation. That means they have three home games coming up consecutively in this Challenge Cup. And the next one is Saturday, April 2nd against Racing Louisville. Go to KansasCityCurrent.com slash tickets to get yours today. Here's Labonta in. Labonta scores! At the hour mark, they make it 3-0. Injured a moment ago, back on the field now, and on the score sheet in 2022, it's Lola Bonta. What a goal there. What a, just that, again, Bennett being able to feed that in to Lola Bonta. Sees Jane Campbell coming out, able to pick the spot, and nails it. Gets it past Jane Campbell. And then you see, hug me. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Lola Bonta mentioned in our broadcast call that every chance she gets, she talks about how much she loves this team. On cue, loves a kiss. <laughs> and you, you see that manifesting in just a free form of play for Lola Bonta in, in particular. But again, this Kansas City team, knowing that they are individuals that together as a unit make the team stronger. That's something that comes from 
the front office, something that is enforced by Matt Potter and believed by this roster. And that, in part, has them in position where they're up 3-0. Two changes now on the way for a team up 3-0. Haley Mace will exit for Izzy Rodriguez. And Kate Del Fava will enter the match for Kristen Hamilton. Two subs remaining now with one window at which to make them for Kansas City. Houston has only used two, and they did them at halftime, so they still have all three of their windows for their three remaining subs. Anything can happen for Houston. We saw that last week with three goals in nine minutes, but it looks like it's gonna be a tough road back for them in this one tonight. Kansas City relentless in their pressure defensively. They've orchestrated a couple of strong counterattacks, and it's just not clicking in that final third for Houston so far. but the star of the evening, as this one bounds out for a goal kick, has been Elise Bennett. You talk about next player up with Lynn Williams going down with a season-ending injury. In steps the rookie, the seventh overall pick. A standout in the Pac-12, making her first start tonight. Doesn't have a goal, but she has two assists. One on the Hamilton goal, one on the Labonte goal. And she's been involved in plenty of other dangerous attacks for this Kansas City current squad. And that's what you want. That's what you want through and through if you're the KC roster. Now, on the other side of things, we heard that Houston really wants to be able to stay compact, make it difficult for teams to break them down. It hasn't been a full explosion, but we have seen moments where they've left Jane Campbell exposed and KC current able to take advantage of that, as you mentioned. Just great play by Elise Bennett. And so for a team that wants to be possession oriented, I think they have more to prove in this match for sure, but are also running out of time to make those adjustments. Labanta, Campbell easily grabs it. Well, through 243 minutes of action now, if my math is right, I think it is, <laughs> for this Houston side. They give up three against Chicago, two against Louisville, and now so far three against Kansas City. Yes, the Louisville game turned out to be a win on just a terrific 10-minute span with three goals scored. James Clarkson has a lot to think over in terms of the defensive play of this Houston Dash side. He will have some time after Saturday to tinker with that. They will go on the road to Chicago at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday, April 2nd, before that international window. So we'll see how that game against Chicago goes. But priority A through Z, you'd imagine, <laughs> in that international window, what is up right now with the defensive efforts, giving up eight goals in not quite yet three games? Yeah, that's definitely top of the list. I think another thing is, um, you know, thinking about how they are utilizing possession and creating Good pockets and seams like this. A chance brewing for the dash. And as it's been the whole night, just lacking that final pass. Still alive for Houston. Played in front off the post. Rachel Daly with a flick. Maybe it was instead deflected. A corner on the way now for the dash. I think Miller might have booted that one away. And it's a quick start where that's what Houston wanted, but. You see that Elizabeth Ball just went down. Yeah, on that initial shot in, saw that Ball was down and had to try and recover as the rebound was still there and eventually Houston able to get a foot on it with the trainer being called on now for Ball. You saw some of the turf got kicked up. Yep, as Ball had to make a stop on a dime there and try to get a boot great spy erica you're absolutely right that was miller not the post so 
Well, that's two big stops now for Cassie Miller. Ball Here. definitely in some discomfort there. Get back to Cassie Miller in a moment as she now sets up the back line in preparation of this corner kick. Houston looks like they want to go short again as they did before play was just stopped. Daly runs over it. Sanchez takes it into the middle. Gray Sock. Still numbers forward for the dash. Gray Sock's ball in will sail through for a goal kick. So Cassie Miller, there are 12 starting goalkeeper jobs in the league. So it's tough to crack that 12, but she has done her part. It's a matter of one of those jobs coming open, whether due to injury, whether due to her just not allowing the coach to keep her out of the lineup. But last year when she filled in for an injured Alyssa Nair, she only gave up 17 goals. That's 0.82 a game in her 19 starts. Eight clean sheets. She took that opportunity and ran with it as that Chicago team went all the way to the final and lost to Washington. And now here she is, A.D. France just getting a night off on the short week. On the bench tonight, no injury there. Cassie Miller shining again, a couple of big stops. Now A.D. French is someone that she's probably not gonna knock off as long as A.D. French is healthy, a two-time goalkeeper of the year in this league. But Cassie Miller, very impressive to have as a number two option. And even before coming to this KC team, by way of the trade, embodying Matt Potter's positive problems with Chicago and so far tonight also embodying that next person up. Here's Vigiano, owns a corner out of it. PA getting a little crunk. Let's go. See if they can stir something offensively now from the dash. It's their fifth corner of the evening. It's left for Daly. Floated to the top of the area, now played in the middle. Five corners, five with the same result. Easy clearances from Kansas City or easy grabs for Cassie Miller. And the flag up on the dash. So with just over 20 minutes to go, they're still left searching for answers on the attack. Down 3-0 against Kansas City. Now these corners, not to be blunt, dangerous enough. Um, you know, and and maybe need a little more air time there, right? A little more, a little more weight, perhaps, to those because not really finding the Houston players in the box. So good on KC to mark up, and I think their defense. We've talked about it in passing here and there, but I think the KC defense has done what they needed to do. Not always pretty, but it don't matter. It's a clean sheet so far. I'm sure you'll take that over anything. <laughs> One stat that is jumping off the page at me here. Touches in the opposition's box. Kansas City has three goals. They only have seven touches in the Houston box. Houston scoreless, they have 22 touches in the Kansas City box. They just haven't figured out what to do with those touches on the final pass in that final third. Staggering disparity there. You'd imagine the team with three goals would be the one to have those 22 touches in the 18, but they only have seven. Well. It, it's something that we've mentioned a few times already, Joe, though. Maybe too many touches. And some of that comes from that first touch not being exactly what you want. So then you kind of are in this pinball situation where you're trying to recollect, but then now you have to avert a, a defender, and then it's just pinging around, and the defense is set. You lose possession there. So that might contribute in part to what you're, what you're seeing or what we're seeing stats-wise. Two changes on the way. <laughs> a 
Elizabeth Eddy enters for Katie Naughton, and that's significant because for the first time, we have NWSL Challenge Cup action in which Naughton is not on the field, losing the streak that dates all the way back to the beginning <laughs> of the 2020 Cup. But a well-earned rest. She has been going at it each and every game now for Houston on the short week, and a game again on Saturday. So 20 minutes shy of another complete 90 in the Challenge Cup for Naughton. Hopefully infusing some energy here with these substitutions for Houston. Trying to find something. Over to Prince, just stepped over the ball. I like that idea though, absolutely. Bri Vasali, the other player into the match for Marissa Vigiano. I think Prince a little shocked. That ends up as a goal kick. It's a big offer <laughs> when making your case tonight. <laughs> Tempting, I should say. To All you're hoping case. for is to plant a seed for maybe the next call, but you're not going to do anything to the call that was just made. Not so much. about that at the end of the evening it's looking more and more like everybody in that central group Houston Chicago Louisville will be looking up at Kansas City a team that was the doormat of the league last year just struggling game in game out Hugh Williams knew it was going to be a tough go of it was already looking ahead to this year trying to get some of the depth some playing time breed that talent getting on in the next season and maybe in the long run already paying dividends here for Kansas City They've already lost a couple of players due to injury in this Challenge Cup. Lynn Williams down for the year. Sam Mewis not 100%. Those are arguably their two biggest stars and best players in this roster. So you're without them and you're on the road and you're about to pick up three more huge points and take seven of a possible nine from your first three on the road with three at home to end the Challenge Cup group phase. Have to tip the cap to what Matt Potter has already been able to accomplish here with the current. And you know, maybe you look back at last year, Gotham goes from sky blue to Gotham. Mm -hmm. Kansas City unveils a new crest and logo. Maybe that new look is uh, paying dividends in the Challenge Cup. Both teams go for that. And both teams have had a new look on the field as well as their identity off the field. A corner on the way for Houston. Look fresh, feel fresh, play fresh. <laughs> I think, though, your point about this KC team last year it was something that Matt Potter talked about on our broadcast call. Just, you know, how, how things are going in his first season as we see this corner coming in. And going out. More of the same from the dash. Unable to figure out the corners tonight. That their sixth, and each one has been similar to that whether it's gone out of play whether it's gone into Cassie Miller's hands or whether it resulted in an easy clearance 0 for 6 on creating opportunities from the corners tonight yes that last one and as the joke goes like the Luther Vandross Jerry curl not quite <laughs> Ooh, didn't quite do it <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Matt Potter talked about uh, you know part of the reason that this was a good fit for him in the interview process was because of what was being built. And it seems from talking with Lola Bonta that has trickled down also to the players. I mean, it's, it's no secret that as a league, the players of this league had a lot of difficult things to navigate in the last handful of seasons. And it sounded like Potter and, and this KC team really trying to be a breath of fresh air they draw things up, they have their goals, everyone committing to that, writing that down. I didn't I can't confirm if it's a whiteboard, a chalkboard, a, a cork board, but it's 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 written down somewhere. They got a goal board. They got a goal board. And they have a lot of goals on the board tonight. 3-0 with a quarter hour remaining with Erica Ayala. I'm Joe Malfa. Glad to have you along on Paramount Plus. A masterclass again from Kansas City. So on the other side of things, Houston, we know it's 
relatively early still in the Challenge Cup, especially comparative to what we're going to see in the NWSL throughout the summer and into the fall. But as we mentioned, defense has to be top of the list, tightening up. That defense has had trouble with Elise Bennett tonight. Again, wreaking havoc. Now to Labonta, turns. Smart turn. I like that a lot. Ooh. And now a little dummy through. Up the right side, it's Nolf. Options in the box. Nolf toward Bennett. Out of play. But that all starts again from the hustle of Bennett. Forced to turn over. Gathered it and created from there. Just kind of the shape of the defense at times really betraying them. And we've talked about it a few times, but worth mentioning again, Clarkson feels that that's put Campbell in some tough positions. We've talked about, you know, goals against for this Houston team. That's, that's gotta be something that gets cleaned up sooner rather than later. One in the midfield. Here's Labonta picking up speed. A goal already for Lola Labonta. done by Kansas City in the midfield. Another foul drawn. This is just about the same spot as it was before. Not a great Maybe. spot. Maybe a little bit further little bit. left yeah. for a cross this time around. A little bit more. It's floated toward the back of the six. Long run for McCain to keep it in. She does. Mm. Well done by Addie McCain. Keeps mm. it alive. And called. We're playing it from the ground. Indirect free kick for the dash. Now McCain did try and get that foul. Maybe falling. <laughs> Not directly on the ball, but over it a little bit. But, uh. The bait didn't catch anything on that one. Houston trying to salvage something in the last dozen minutes. Something positive to take into their Saturday meeting on the road with Chicago. Already lost to Chicago 3-1 on this field at PNC Stadium. That came in their opener. Houston in that one scored early, 19th minute. Katie Naughton, they controlled the first 20. From there, it was the Mallory Pugh show. Goal in the 27th and the 60th. Aaron Wright scoring the penalty in the 58th. A 3-1 win for the Red Stars. On the other side of things for a Kansas City team that will be in first place at the end of the night, they will host Louisville at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday, their first home game of the Challenge Cup. And Kansas City tied Louisville in the opener, a game they very much should have won. Unlucky to only have a tie in that game, and this Kansas City team otherwise could have nine points out of a possible nine. Some changes on the way. Desiree Scott will be on the way out. And Chardonnay Curran enters for Kansas City. One of those 2022 draftees for Kansas City. Desi Scott coming off there. The other change, we'll see Labonta on the way out and Jenna Weinbrenner on the way in. Labonta already exited, you see, in the center of your screen, walking on the far side of the field. General Weinbrenner came on. In that second game, we saw Chardonnay Curran get that start there. That was the game. Sands Lynn Williams. So now another look here as she subs in for this game. Late 
Foul call against McCain on the challenge against Sophie Schmidt. Schmidt hasn't had the same success in the midfield tonight as she did when she moved up into the midfield for the second half comeback against Louisville. And just miscues all over again, not on the same page with Hanson on that free kick. I mean, these boil down to missed opportunities for Houston. I think we got to put, you know, number two on that list after defense or maybe even a 1B is figuring out these set pieces. Saturday, 4 Eastern on CBS, San Diego and Angel City meet for the second time. A 1-1 draw in their first meeting. The two newcomers to the league will forever be associated with each other. The 2022 newcomers, 4 p.m. Eastern time, CBS. Don't miss a minute of it here in the 2022 NWSL Challenge Cup. Our hashtag is cue the chaos, and plenty of it we've seen so far. I don't think you would have had many people believe you if you said Kansas City would take seven of a possible nine. But the most important thing is every player on that Kansas City roster would have believed it. That's it. That's the one right there. I learned my lesson never to doubt a team that has some firepower, as we've seen with KC. Again, if we look at the wins, losses from, from last year's Challenge Cup, didn't necessarily work out in their favor, but they found ways to score. And eventually, especially with a team relocating because they, they were Utah, so not, not a, a totally new franchise in, you know, as if having to build through a draft. Technical terms, yes, but they brought all the players with them. Correct, yes. Not having, to build, <laughs> right, not having to build through an expansion draft, shall we say, um, as we do have some sides that have had to do that in the league this season. But, you know, you always have to, you, you get a chance to do that reset, right? The fresh, <laughs> fresh crest. Um, and Kansas City has, has done just that and, and really is trusting the process it looks like so far. And the reason it's important, though, to, to get some of that separation as you've been talking about, Joe, is because the top team in each of the divisions is going to move forward, as well as that number two club with the best record. So even if somehow they, they miss out on that top spot, you want to make sure, comparative to the rest of the field, that you're in a good position. And the best way to do that is to collect all the coins when you can. <laughs> and at this stage of the game, even if they were, as you mentioned, to miss out on that top spot, it would take a poor showing in their last three games, to be honest. Up seven, up to seven points in three games, all on the road. You look around the rest of the league, second place right now in the East is a four-point Gotham team. Second place in the West, is a four-point Portland team, but they can improve upon that tonight. And then second place in this Central Division will be a four-point Chicago team at the end of the night. So to have seven in the mix, it would take quite a fall for them to miss out not only on the top spot, but also that number two spot, as you mentioned. So they're in a terrific spot heading into the final three games. You want that. You want to be in the driver's seat. Loaded centrally. Again, an easy grab for Cassie Miller. Del Fava over to Bennett. Pair of assists tonight for Bennett. Goals scored by Leach Hamilton to get things going in the first half. And then in the second half, Labonta. Just 
Four minutes to go, plus stoppage time now at PNC Stadium. Salvaging a point seemingly out of the equation for Houston. But can they take something positive out of this one? A late goal, a late spell of positive play to carry some momentum into Saturday. Maybe it's right here, almost from Daly. Loaded in again. Here's Schmidt looking to find it. And cleared away. Here's some life at the end. Vasali on the right foot. What a defensive effort all around from Kansas City. That time sliding in to clear it away. And a Weinbrenner. Great individual move though by Bree Vasali and we're starting to see Houston pick up some of those 50-50 balls. Again, that possession stat that you talked about earlier. And that's what you want to do, as we see even just there, being able to collect those balls, but now you want to be able to finish. That's still missing from Houston. Daly's service. Great testament again to the back line of KC. And just nothing doing on the long ball. Houston on the evening with just a couple minutes remaining. Well, they have 63 final third entries. They only are credited with one scoring chance. Mm. Not great, not great. <laughs> and we know there's more. We know there's more that Houston has to offer. But again, you have to think that KC is, is impacting that as well. getting flashbacks of, of an FC Kansas City type defense. I know what that franchise <laughs> was able to do. From long distance, same result as all the other ones tonight. 90 seconds to go of the 90 minutes. Cassie Miller will have to get the ball and play quickly here. Don't forget, she did have a time-wasting yellow card at the end of the first half, so she can't take too much here in the second half. Otherwise, there won't be a question who's starting in goal on Saturday. <laughs> It'll just be AD France by default. Yes. I don't necessarily think Cassie Miller has given Matt Potter anything to think about just by virtue of the type of goalkeeper AD French is, but on her way to perhaps a ninth clean sheet in 20 NWSL starts, when you have a nearly 50% clean sheet rate, you're doing something right between the posts. Positive problems, positive problems. You know, and, it, and it's that competition that you want. Creating positive problems for your technical staff. While also being all in on, on the team. Loaded toward Daly. Pinballing around. Daly's volley blocked. Goes down hard. Head slammed off the grass. Sent back in the middle. Play continues. Two Houston players down now. So we see the stoppage time. Into stoppage time presented by Verizon. Yeah, let's look at this. Daly. Watch her head bound off the turf on the fall. Yep, you see trying to go in there and just kind of gets clipped. Good to see her back up. No malice there. It was just one of those entanglements <laughs> that happens in soccer. 
should say, head off the grass, a natural surface here in Houston. Mm -hmm. And that's important to note because turf a lot less forgiving on a fall like that. Mm. Not, fun. not sure what the official call was, but it looks like we're going to have a drop ball at the top of the area. Mm. Perhaps Laura Rodriguez just stopped it for the head injury in the end, and yeah, possession was at Kansas City's feet. So see the crowd, strong opinions about that. But we play on here. Now into stoppage time. Houston bench upset with some of the physical play that has gone uncalled in these last couple of minutes. I'm okay with that no call there. Michelle Prince kind of did a little bit of a hezzy trying to make sure she wasn't overrunning the ball. And again, a smart play to, with that natural delay, uh, kind of intertwine into the legs of the defender there, but I don't think you can call that in earnest. <laughs> Through to Prince. Blocked again. This Kansas City back line will not quit. They want that clean sheet. They just recover well. That's what I'm seeing, Joe. They're recovering well. It's not perfect. But the patience, the confidence comes through. That's the third time tonight where directly from the corner it ends up in the hands of Cassie Miller. All in all, a night that James Clarkson will not be pleased with from this dash squad. He was hoping to recreate the magic of the second half against Louisville. Went with the lineup to start tonight that was out there for the second half of that game. The one that sparked the three goals in nine minutes to come from behind, down 2-0 at the break. That lineup started tonight. The same success was not there. They appeared out of sync the entire evening. Give up the two first-half goals. Labonta at the 60-minute mark makes it 3-0 and puts it completely out of reach. And it was from the get-go. The goal scored in the second minute. Taylor leads the fastest in NWSL Challenge Cup history. Couple of days to figure it out for Houston on the road in Chicago on Saturday. And then a longer break to figure it out with a couple of weeks due to the international window in this Challenge Cup. James Clarkson will hope for some points Saturday to keep them in the mix here in the central group. But they will be a, quite a ways behind Kansas City. And there is the final whistle at PNC Stadium. Kansas City current cruises to a 3-0 victory. They take seven of a possible nine points on the road in their first three games. And they'll end the Challenge Cup with three straight at home. Houston left searching for answers. Falls again, one win, two losses through three matches. And sitting tied for rather in third place with three points here in the Central Group. Just a really good showing by Kansas City. Definitely some things Houston is going to want to work out, but I like that we also got to see a few different players come in, either getting starts for the first time, even career first starts, um, as well as the substitutions. I think that's smart. I think that's smart going forward in this Challenge Cup. Kansas City last year finishes bottom.